So, uh, hmm. how deep do we go down the rabbit hole? <laughs> Um, my name is Kalia. Uh, I am a college educator. I teach history particularly. Uh, my name is Rob Moore. Uh, I run the Stash Bot part-time. Um, a lot of old school hip-hop and comic books. Something nerdy about me. Um, I... How do you pick just one? <laughs> just one. I collect comic books. Uh, I love Star Trek, so I'm a Trekkie. Um, I used to have the the intro of Next Generation timed out so where I knew where the planets would be in relation to where the music was going to be. Because, of course, why not? And I've loved comic books for the longest time. I don't know, you know, my biggest nerd thing probably, I definitely am like hardcore about a collecting comic books that I had when I was a kid, you know what I mean, and I just love that stuff, and uh, definitely, you know, I used to hide my comic books from my friends when I was a teenager, you know what I mean, I was like, none of them were into it anymore, and you know, I had to just be like, I'm gonna keep this a secret, you know, and uh, what's funny is, uh, I ran into a friend at a comic book show I was doing, you know, a guy I used to hang out in high school, and he was buying a bunch of comic books, and he used to rap, you know what I mean, making mixtapes and all that stuff, and I was like, you read comic books? You know, he was surprised to see me there, and he was like, yeah, you know, and he was just like, I didn't tell nobody either, do you know what I mean? I mean, to me, that brings up Stephen Urkel, do you know what I mean? Um, um yeah, I would say Blurred. Like most things when you're living in, and this is where I get all professory, right? Uh, so anytime you're living in the context of a larger dominant hegemonic society, um, defining things for self to produce, be able to produce a counter narrative, I think is very important. So while I, the word itself, I have no real connection to um, what it's allowed perhaps the black community to do and give itself permission to do, I think is very powerful and necessary. For every unique and cultural nuance that makes up the black community, I think those same things apply when you're talking about nerdness and blurredness and all of that. Um, so, I mean, with the black community, just like you get people who are um, super into hip-hop. You have hip-hop heads that know so much history and depth and philosophical new, <laughs> like interpretations of like that's possible because of the history of black people in the US. Um, and so we of course spread our nerdness to that point and beyond. I think the uniqueness is kind of like your own inner struggle with it basically, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I think anybody else is kind of like socially allowed to be, you know what I mean, yeah. like that. But they go, oh, oh, that's not what black people do, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. When I was younger, you were the Wu-Tang Clan, like referencing Tony Stark and all this comic book stuff. And a lot of my friends mm -hmm. even know what that was, you know what I mean? And I kind of had to like, well, that's Iron Man's real name. They were like, how do you even know that? You know, mm -hmm. it was just, uh, but it's always been there. Like I was talking to a friend, he was saying, that stuff was probably normal in somewhere like New York, a big city, you know what I mean, like that. But here, you know what I mean, that the blurred thing. Um, I do, I mean, but I think it exists in all communities up to a point, but maybe it's a little harsher in the <laughs> black community, do you know what I mean? Maybe in some ways, because we... What Urkel was pulling on was that, that stereotypical link between um, being adept and a genius, for lack of a better word, in certain spaces. And we equate that with being also socially inept, right? So there's this false um, blending of these two ideas. So the same, I would say that there's still some of that same thing. Um, whereas in, like I've been told, um, oh, well, you know, he's in IT. Like, he's not going to know how to talk to you. <laughs> and I find that kind of interesting um, because we don't always allow that same nuance within the black community, right? So if um, a white male bad at communicating, bad at social interactions and social cues, 
we excuse that because he spends all day with a computer, he's, he's not socially adept. But we don't always, not carte blanche, but we don't always have that same forgiveness space. That said, I don't know if I'm the right person to answer that because almost all of my friends are some variation of nerd. Um, and maybe we're just all socially awkward together. <laughs> like, I don't, I don't know. I don't think so, you know, not that I've noticed, you know, um, I will say something that I've noticed, I, like, say I'm going to uh, buy a collection from someone, you know what I mean, and people have told me this, like, they're gonna sell it to, you know what I mean, the white guy, the old white guy, you know what I mean, and I have experienced that, but I don't, I couldn't tell you if it was because they offered me a, you know, a higher price, you know what I mean, it's new in the end, I didn't get it, you know what I mean, and I think people, I think maybe there's a, oh, I, I trust this old white guy, you know what I mean, when someone's selling their collection, but, I mean, I've heard of that happening, I couldn't say it's happened to me for sure, but I have had that end result of me not getting it, and it's always been in the back of my head, but that's probably about to the extent, you know what I mean? And I, I wasn't even sure if that was what was going on, you know? I mean, to me, I was new in this whole, you know, the comic book thing as far as the established community. And I think everyone is really accepting of me. I think I kind of went into it like thinking, I bet all these guys think it's a big competition, you know what I mean? And they want to like, well, let's shove this new guy out. But yeah, everything was good. Everything was nice. Everyone was accepting of me. I got, I made a lot of new friends and stuff. It, was not as bad as I thought it would be, you know? For me not hanging out or associating with these people, you know what I mean, since, I don't know, 10 years ago. And yeah, everyone was accepting, yeah. I, I liked it, yeah, I had a good experience with it. Um, there is, uh, I wanted to play D&D Dungeons and Dragons forever, since I was a kid, right? Um, never really knew quite what it was, but I heard about it and was interested um, and for reasons within the, as you may be aware, the hi sometimes hyper-religious nature of black households, there was no D&D in the house, like just none at all. Um, what that meant for me getting older, and now I'm a grown woman, holla, um, now that I'm grown, I started looking for a place to play, uh, to play D&D. And I had read about it, you know, because nerds. Um, so I read about it, but what I found every time I encountered a space that I might want to go into, it was very white male dominated. It's the same dynamics that exist in the larger social world, nerdness just becomes a microcosm for that. Um, and I did not feel comfortable, nor did I feel welcomed by um, these white male dominated spaces, and I wasn't going to force myself into those spaces because that I just, I have so many other things to fight. I did not want that fight. Um, so I would say a lot of the larger social issues that exist um, surrounding racial dynamics, they exist in the nerd world too. Um, the misogyny, the racism, like all of that's still there. It just happens related to nerd stuff. Um, I, I don't know if it's a, Pressure. I mean, it may be something like a pressure, but I really feel internally um, like if they're um, if they're representative of some sort of not white, <laughs> not whiteness, I do feel this internal pressure to support like most of the comics that I buy are black central characters, um, whether they be one of the major ones like Marvel DC or an indie can we still call like image indie i think so maybe um boom stuff like that but um i definitely feel an internal pressure and i do get very 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 disappointed when i don't gravitate to their storyline or something like um if i can bring up a specific name um the when i think it was marvel released america right she was this latina like um lesbian like all in one diverse right this non heteronormative non male character and i really i was like man awesome let me go check out the comic right i was so disappointed <laughs> i was disappointed by the art sorry artists 
um, but it just didn't feel like it had absorbed as much of the effort that they put into other um, characters and other artists, artwork and storylines and all of that. So um, in those cases, I feel like I should, because it's, you get so happy when you see something that's not normative. Um, you really, at least for me, I really want to be able to support and show that there is this network of support for these non-normative characters. Um, and so when they don't live up to what I'm hoping for, um, it's disappointing. When I was a kid, I, I mostly read Marvel comics because they had characters like that. DC comics was all like a square-jawed white guy, you know what I mean? And I was like, this is, I don't know, not real to me, you know? And so, yeah, I definitely have a preference to Marvel because they had a lot of characters like that. Uh, the first uh, Latin superhero, the uh, White Panther, and also you got uh, Black Panther, Luke Cage, so yeah, you know? Um, they gave it an effort. I thought when DC tried, it was like, let's put this guy in for one issue. Do you know what I mean? And you know, that's it. You'll, they'll forget about him. But I definitely, I preferred Marvel because they had a lot more of that stuff. I don't know if it was kind of like subconsciously. You know, I didn't go like, I want to read Marvel because they got minority characters. But that was definitely a part of it. It seemed more real to me. One of my favorite is um, Moon Girl. Um, Moon Girl is literally smarter than Banner, like smarter than um, Iron Man. Like she holds her own and she's this little black girl who's in middle school or something like that, struggling with social issues and how to um, exist with this intelligence and having to still do kid things like go to school when she knows more than the teacher. and. Um, so I really appreciate how she's represented. Um, when the comic first came out, Moon Girl, Devil Dinosaur, she was very much a fully developed character that had social concerns and like, how do I keep my parents from worrying about me while like saving the world, right? Um, so I really appreciated that. My suggestion, if you're ever looking for good black representation, is look by look for characters that were developed by black people. I mean, you know, one thing I found out, uh, a lot of these um, books from the 50s, you know, the most popular artist was a guy named Matt Baker. And I, I just knew the name, right? Those books sell for a lot. I found out he was a gay black guy. You know what I mean? In the 50s, it, he was like one of the most, you know, popular artists there was around the time. And I just think, like, man... Life must have been hard for you, man, you know? It's like, wow. I have a book, um, Black Comics Returns, which has every black character I could ever think of um, that's ever been, I won't say ever, ever been created, but it's a really good, excellent compilation of if you're wondering where to start with black representation in comics and sci-fi and stuff, uh, Comics Returns would be... Um, Black Comics Returns would be a good one for that. If we want diversity, right, if we want more non-normative, non-white characters, non-white male characters uh, to lead these, then you have to go and find the stories that were written by non-normative, non-white male people. Um, they're not just gonna magically show up if we remake Charmed with black people now instead of white people. Like, that's not how um, diversity, I think, should work.